Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's early July and I've got the River Tyvee here in the background. It's one of my favourite times of year quite simply because I get to combine some amazing brown trout fishing and then move on to the sea trout fishing. The brown trout fishing during the day at this time of year can be pretty tricky but the evening fishing in particular, so when you're fishing the evening rise, when you're fishing the spinner fall, can be absolutely amazing. And one of the quite unique things about the Tyvee is that you can actively target some of the sea trout on the dry fly at the same time. So not only are you picking off some of the, the bigger brown trout, which may not move for the entirety of the day, but then will move for the evening spinner fall. And also you get the, the late hatch uh, especially if it's been warm, you'll get the hatch uh, or the heaviest part of the hatch towards the end of the day as well. So what will happen is you'll get some of the biggest brown trout of the day, but also then some sea trout at the same time. And then what I tend to do is move on afterwards to more traditional uh, uh, sea trout fishing with, with the wet flies. But definitely what I will start this evening with and what I, my plan for this evening is, we've just had a bit of a spate, a well needed spate. We haven't had water in probably two months or more. So this was uh, a well needed spate and it's just dropping back after that spate now. So we're just carrying a bit of a uh, bit of peat water from the, uh, the, the Tregaram bog area basically. So it's not perfect conditions yet, but it's getting there. And it's again, this, uh, this fresh, fresh water will carry us through now for, for the next few weeks, hopefully. And it's certainly brought up a few sea trout, which is nice to see. But my plan is I'm definitely going to be targeting some sea trout and big brown trout at dusk and then move on to the sea trout on the traditional wet flies after. But what I'm specifically in this video I want to show you is how to target some of the larger brown trout and hopefully saying hopefully because it's not it doesn't happen every night hopefully also uh, get a sea trout on the dry fly as well so these these sea trout are actively feeding so they're actively looking for the olives and will actively be feeding ex alongside the the brown trout uh, but there are a couple of ways of identifying them which hopefully during the video I will be able to uh, to show you but that is the plan so I've got my trusted uh, I love this rod the sage LL nine foot four weight all set up ready to go I've got a video up above about setting up for uh, dry fly fishing check that out if you haven't before but, but it's pretty much the same setup the only difference is when you are fishing into the evening and especially when it's getting darker uh, you don't have to fish a as long a leader so you can definitely chop back the length of the leader but yeah pretty much the same sort of setup I'm fishing it's 6x 5x something similar uh, tippet material so you have to be a little bit careful if you do hook the, the a, a bigger sea trout uh, as a rule you tend to hook the school sea trout when you're uh, fishing the dry fly so if they are actively feeding it tends to be the smaller fish that do actively feed when they're when they are back in fresh water but sometimes you do pick up larger fish so even yesterday um, I managed to pick up a fish around the four pound mark that is very much an exception to the rule though most of the time the fish will be three quarters of a pound to a pound and a half when you are targeting them on dry fly but as long as you play them carefully you can uh, you, you'll soon land those fish as well so yeah pretty much the same sort of setup I'm starting off with a little olive emerger, but I definitely will then later into the evening when I see the spinners are coming down or are down, I will then move on to a spinner pattern. I tend to, because I need to travel with a couple of different outfits, I'm traveling as light as I can with on, on the gear front. Basically in the front here, I have everything I need from a dry fly perspective. So I've got my, the muslin, my floatant and then the drying off rag basically and then I also carry just a spool of leader material. In the main section I've obviously got my dry flies but then beyond that it's just a couple of boxes of uh, the sea trout flies, leader material and of course a head torch. But that is pretty much it so I'm traveling as light as possible obviously got the net here in the background as well uh, so I've got the other rod here which will be coming into use 
basically when it is dark and when I've when I can't see anything else that's when I'd be moving on to uh, moving on to swinging the swinging the wet fly so that's the setup so let's just hope that the the fish do start to uh, pop up this evening and I can show you some sport it's now quarter past nine and the fish are just starting to make a move as the spinners just get closer to the water surface and also just a late hatch comes on at the moment is uh, there's a bit of everything coming off really there's some sedges also some uh, some yellow maize some um, olive uprights and some blue winged olives so there's a bit of everything coming off for the fish but uh, yeah a few a few fish are starting to move I can't say I've seen an obvious sea trout feeding yet but I've seen some really nice brown trout so I'm probably gonna have a uh, a few speculative casts over the uh, brown trout to begin with I pick off a few of them so this is kind of water I'm targeting at the moment I'm just really, really looking for this kind of these flats or these traditional flats this one's actually running down into a a pretty big pool below me uh, and i'm looking for that kind of holding water as well where some of the fish will be just kind of coming up into here in the evening especially some of those smaller fish that will be actively feeding so yeah hopefully the the, the sea trout will turn up and start feeding and uh, we'll get a few on the line what i'm looking for so you'll have some of the brown trout if i show you kind of over there that section over across the other side there there's usually a few really good brown trout that hang around over there and i know this area really well so i know roughly what should be where <clears throat> a lot of the time if you see a big fish move in a, a random spot or a spot that you don't normally see fish turn in that can usually be uh, the sea trout so the sea trout because it's basically not resident in this pool it may just be moving through and it can actually feed as it moves through the pool uh, or it can just be come up and stay in a very random spot for the evening and even drop back afterwards so a lot of the time the telltale sign of a sea trout is a big fish that's kind of out in the open and really a position that a big brown trout wouldn't put itself in it's kind of putting itself in a danger spot uh, in terms of predation or, or, or whatever. So the sea trout, again, doesn't know the pool as well as the brown trout will. So it won't be, won't be kind of sitting in or hunkering down in some of those better lies, essentially. But uh, yeah, let's see. P probably pick off a few brown trout first and let's see if a, if a sea trout or two switch on later. That's a nice brown trout to start the evening with. Really small sip. Whoa, he's really going. Really, really going. Nice fish. Really nice fish to start the night with. Yeah, nice fish. Probably around the 16, 16 inch mark. A bit of damage on top of his head. That's a good fish. Yeah, that's a good, good 16, 17 inch. That's not a bad start to the evening. Nice fish. So like I said, the beauty of this time of evening is you get some of those big brown trout, which may only be feeding at this time of night. And you get the benefit of the sea trout. So it's really the best of both worlds. Let's give that try a quick... Uh, 
pinch in the rag just to dry off the CDC. I'm only fishing a small size 16 emerger at the moment. It's now 9.30 and the spinners are just starting to dance on the water surface here. So it's not long before they'll be on the water laying their eggs and giving the the fish a lot of protein late in the day. I've spotted a couple of fish just in that furthest bubble line there. Now their positioning again would tell me that they are brown trout. It's not an exact science but nine times out of ten uh, they're, they're in that yeah, again they're in a nice little lie next to cover uh, they're not putting themselves in, in danger essentially they're, they're keeping into safe safe spots whereas again if there's a sea trout you, more often than not you'll find them just out in a lot of this open water but let's see if uh, if any of those brown trout are decent so the rise form of a sea trout feeding in fresh water is quite a telltale sign as well a lot of the time they'll be feeding quite uneducated for their size and what I mean by that is they feed like a very exuberant um, small fish in a big fish body quite simply because they haven't had um, the practice essentially of feeding in fresh water like a brown trout of the same size has so a lot of the time if you see a very uh, slashy rise not not necessarily like you know sometimes a, a trout intercepting a, a sedge can be quite slashy it's not that kind of slashy but it's yeah just basically they're they're expending too much energy for the amount of food they're going to gain or the um, the protein gain but let's uh, let's see if there's a couple of nice brown trout here to begin with before we have a, a search around maybe on another pool for a sea trout it's now 10 o'clock and unfortunately I haven't seen any obvious signs of a sea trout yet. There's still time. Now, to be honest, you're not really seeing much of your fly. You're casting in the general direction of the fish. And basically, if anything moves within that vicinity, you lift. It's as simple as that. So don't always think that I'm, you know, seeing every rise to... Uh, the fly it just isn't the case especially at this time of the evening so yeah if something rises within the vicinity and i've been targeting it i will lift and you get away with a lot more at this time of night as well so you can disturb the water a lot more at this time of night and get just generally get away with a lot more but there's a, a decent brown trout just kind of opposite me here so i'm going to pick him off first but then hopefully just below me i'm just going to keep monitoring down there um, I'm on a different pool now, but hopefully something silver will start popping up. Uh, I've probably got another quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, but this can be the key quarter of an hour, 20 minutes. So I'm, uh, I'm still hopeful. That's one really nice fish. You probably won't be able to see much now, so you're just going to have to rely on me telling you what's going on there's a really nice fish just kind of opposite me here feeding just off that grassy bank the positioning again i would have to say that it's probably going to be a decent brown trout let's uh, let's try and find out that's gonna be a decent drift over him There he goes. Yeah, another nice brown trout. Not bad, I think that was two casts. Yeah, nice brownie. Really nice brownie. 
That's some fantastic fish. Again, this is the beauty of fishing this time in the evening with the dries. You pick off some sea trout, but also you pick off the best brown trout. Uh, best brown trout as well. And he's just wrapping himself in the leader at the moment and then just tearing off across the river. Great fish and great fight. You know, all of this is day ticket water. You can fish a lot of this water for, for the, just for the trout for £10 a day. Or if you want to fish for the salmon and sea trout as well, it's £25 a day. But either way, fantastic. That's a really good fish. You know what? It may actually be a sea trout. <laughs> just saw it there. And again, this is where I'm saying it's not always an exact science. It's a good fish, whatever it is. It'll be not far off. 18 to 20 inches, I reckon. Put it back on the reel. The way it's fighting at the moment, I'm starting to lean towards it being a sea trout, to be honest. Either way, it's going to have... It's going to be netted. I'm not going to bring this one to hand. I'm not going to take any chances. It's a good fish. Really strong. Really, really strong. I'm just back to, I've just got the nylon in at the moment, trying to keep that rod nice and low. Nearly here though, starting to tie it. Starting. It's a sea trout. <laughs> it's a sea trout. After all that, yeah, cracking little sea trout, about two and a half pounds or so. Let's take it into the edge and have a closer look. So I've just brought this sea trout into the shallows. Like I said, sometimes you just got to cover the fish and hope for the best. In fairness, I thought this was a, a decent brown trout, but it's actually turned out to be uh, a really nice sea trout of, I don't know, two and a half pounds or so. I'm probably uh, around the 18 inch mark or so. Let's, uh, let's give you a look. There it is in the net, as you can see, just leaving it in the shallows, but submerged. So the head is just underwater. It doesn't flap around, just allows the fish to recover. And then I'll just uh, send it on its way. If that was successful anyway, you can see how these fish can be targeted and picked off on the dry fly at dusk. Great sport. You should uh, give it a go. Let's send the fish on its way. Beautiful fish. It's probably gonna rock it off. Yep. 